hard to believe that Mint Mobile can be good at just Ryan Reynolds, $15 a month. Go. So, as Mint's new owner, I brought... Oh, All right, let's see. Let's check it out. On December 7th, 2019, Juice World and his entourage would begin to board a Gulfstream private ah, jet Juice that World, was located man. inside Too the talented. Van Nuys Airport. The private jet would eventually take off at 8.23 p.m. PST, with its final destination being the Chicago Midway International Airport. The jet would be airborne for just over three hours before safely landing at the Atlantic Terminal in the Chicago Midway International Airport at around 1.28 a.m. CST. Wow. But little did Juice World know that the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, and the Gang Investigation Federal Task Force were wow. waiting for him to land. After landing, Juice World and his entourage were confronted in the lobby of the Atlantic Aviation Building by three FBI agents, a canine officer as well as Officer Romero of the Chicago Police Department's Gang Intelligence Unit. Authorities would then immediately request Officer Mazzillo to have his canine perform a narcotic search on all of the luggage that was on board the private jet, which was already conveniently loaded on two separate luggage carts in the lobby. The canine immediately detected narcotics in the luggage on the first cart. Officer Mazzillo would then take the canine outside where I don't, I don't, he return to detect even more narcotics in the luggage on the second cart. Authorities would then notify Juice World and everyone else that was on board the private jet that the canine detected narcotics in the luggage and that the suitcases were going to be opened and searched. While the search was taking place, Ali Lottie, Juice World's girlfriend, would return from the bathroom and take a seat on the lounge chairs in the lobby with Juice World seated directly in front and to the right of her. Juice World would then slowly turn around to face Ali Lottie and let out a deep loud screech before throwing his arms in the air and falling to the ground. Wow. Juice World would then begin to convulse on the ground while blood leaked from his nose and mouth wow. and Ali Lottie began to scream for help. Chicago police officers Michael Botica and Daniel McAuliffe would then claim to immediately start helping Juice World by rolling juice on his side to help with his breathing. Officer Botica would then call for the Chicago Fire Department while a Homeland Security Investigations agent gave Juice World two shots of Narcan. What? Officer Botica wow. would then claim that after receiving the Narcan shots that Juice World would stop convulsing. Juice World was then transported to the Christ Hospital in Chicago by the Chicago Fire Department paramedics, while the authorities would uncover 41 vacuum-sealed bags containing 70 pounds of marijuana and six prescription Fuck. bottles of codeine. Fuck. After the search, two members of Juice World's entourage were taken into custody by police. The first individual was a man by the name of Henry Dean, who was Juice World's personal security guard at the time. Henry Dean was never on the private jet, but was waiting for them to land at the Chicago International Airport along with a limousine service to pick Juice World and his entourage up in. After getting word that Juice World safely landed, Henry Dean would enter the airport to help everyone that was on board the flight with their luggage, but was quickly stopped by authorities. Officers would then ask Henry Dean Crazy if he had up. any weapons on him, which he would inform them that he did, in fact, have two firearms on him, but has a valid firearms owner ID as well as a concealed carry license. Unfortunately, these licenses did not allow him to carry a concealed firearm inside an airport, and police eventually arrested Henry Dean on three charges related to the firearms he had in his possession. Shout out to Tim, bro. This is dope the video. The other individual arrested was Chris Long, Juice World's personal photographer and videographer. Chris Long was arrested after authorities discovered a bag containing camera equipment along with a 40 caliber pistol hidden inside. When asked who the bag belonged to, Chris Long would claim ownership of the bag but denied any knowledge of there being a firearm inside. Chris Long would then be arrested and charged with unlawful possession of a firearm at around 2.03 a.m. on December 8, 2019. A little over an hour later, Juice World would be pronounced dead by Dr. Sean Motsney at 3.14 a.m. The cause of death was later revealed to be oxycodone and codeine toxicity. Everyone else that was on board the private jet was free to go without any additional charges. But what about the 70 pounds of marijuana that was trafficked over 2,000 miles across the country? It was wow. stated that neither of the suitcases containing the vacuum sealed bags had any name or personal items that could be linked to any of the passengers on the jet and nobody claimed ownership of the suitcases either. But why was it even on the jet in the first place? Juice World was a rich and famous superstar. Why would anyone put Juice World in that position in the first place? Regardless, the feds weren't just going to let drug trafficking slide. Shit crazy, right? yeah. 
After looking further into the police report, something odd stood out to me and that was the fact that the Gang Investigation Federal Task Force was waiting for them to land. I can understand that if the pilot called in a tip stating that there were narcotics and firearms on board, why Snitch. the Department of Homeland Security, the FBI, <coughs> and the police being there. But the Gang Investigation Federal yeah, Task weird. Force seemed strange and oddly specific. I began to do more research where I eventually discovered that just six days before Juice World's sudden overdose, the Chicago Tribune released an article claiming that the FBI is in town to investigate the death of a Chicago rapper who went by the name of Shooter Shells. Shooter Shells was a member of a Chicago gang called Black Mob and back in 2017 released a song on YouTube titled Death of 150 which was a brutal diss to a rival gang. The rival gang targeted in the song goes by the name of No Limit, with its most well-known members being rappers G Herbo and Lil Bibby. Lil Bibby is also the owner of Grade A Productions, a record label Juice World was heavily involved with since its start and would later sign on to a multi-million dollar joint venture deal with Interscope Records. Now while most Chicago gang members are known to be some of the most savage individuals, Lil Bibby was different, with his main focus always being money, and was known as a big time drug dealer who rarely dissed opposing gang members. When the Chicago drill scene started to gain traction <coughs> online back in 2012, names here. such as Chief Keith, Lil Durk, G Herbo and Lil Bibby were some of the biggest in the industry. Juice World, who grew up in Homewood, Illinois, a Chicago suburb just 30 minutes south of where Lil Bibby is from, became a huge fan of the drill scene and when Lil Bibby showed interest in Juice World, he signed him almost immediately despite having similar opportunities to get into the music industry. After signing, Juice World, who had no gang ties prior to meeting Lil Bibby, was now acting as if he was a lifelong No Limit gang member and began involving ah, himself in that, very serious situations that. that had absolutely nothing to do with him. For example, Juice World would start dissing a guy by the name of Posto. Posto was a member of a Chicago gang called Lakeside, which rivals No Limit, and was brutally murdered back in November of 2013 at just 18 years old, after being shot in the head while standing in the first floor hallway in a building located <coughs> on the 2700 block of East 80th Street in Chicago. And on my wrist is a glass house, smoke a pasta to our pass out. Ooh. What you say about pasta? This is a dirty ass out. Juice World would also diss another No Limit rival who went by the name of Lil Mister. Lil Mister was a well-known Chicago drill rapper and a member of a Chicago gang called Ruga World. On March 15, 2019, Lil Mister was fatally shot in the head after a drive-by on the 7400 block of South Harvard Avenue. He was only 24 years old at the yeah. time of his death. We say we smoking on ghosts, smoking on uh -oh. packing pasta and Mister the most, man. Oh, juice wasn't playing. In addition to all that, Juice World also began to drop rakes, which is a gang sign used to disrespect anyone affiliated with the gangster disciples. Hey, we dropping them bitches and we fall. Wow. <laughs> wow. Work Juice was with that shit. You need a sauna. Wow, so, I did not know what? this. On me, hey bro, I think that Most of these subtle yet very serious expressions of disrespect would go over the heads of the majority of Juice World fans, but fans of the Chicago drill scene would immediately take notice and criticize Juice World and No Limit online. One Chicago drill specialist by the name of Rasha947 would comment, Wow, this is actually shameful. How are No Limit letting him do this meal ticket or not? Straight clown, he would be on this sub if he wasn't famous. Another drill superfan by the name of Throwaway8881 would say, Herb, Cairo, and Bibby are some clowns for letting him do all this. A now deleted user would respond to that comment with, It's gotta be awkward these savage hood dudes pretending to vibe with him just for money and clout, when he's clearly some soft suburban dude, and him trying to pretend he can relate to their savage mentalities. These situations are prime examples to show the lengths Juice World would go in order to fit in with the No Limit Street Gang. Now, going back to the narcotics found on Juice World's private jet, fans have been speculating on several theories since the day it happened, with a common one being that the narcotics found on Juice World's private jet were for personal use and were most likely being brought from California to Chicago to be given out to the guests at Juice World's 21st birthday party that was scheduled on the day he unfortunately passed away. Another theory being discussed online is that Juice World's girlfriend, Ali Lottie, was the mastermind behind all of this with the evidence being leaked court documents claiming that Ali Lottie was arrested for trafficking meth back in 2017. Ali Lottie denied these claims on Twitter by tweeting, Never seen meth ever, and I'm pretty sure meth is Adderall. Again, this paperwork has nothing to do with me. I'm so sorry. 
I don't even know the lawyer. Fans would also speculate that Chris Long may have something to do with this due to his ties with the underground cannabis industry in Los Angeles. This is Chris Long, the plug. It's Royal Bob's Alley man. is a store that sells medicinal marijuana, yes. and you're the manager. Who owns it? Or Can you talk about that? Some guys own it. So you really can't talk about who well, owns okay. it? I'm not gonna... Okay, that's the fair. weed business is a business shady. where I love, I love the weed information is kept close to the chest. Yeah. Um, but basically, he works for some dudes that own a lot of them. Like he works with them, and they are fucking. How'd they find you? Shit. Come on, and others, and more specifically, the Chicago drill scene, would speculate that No Limit was behind all of this the whole time. With one highly upvoted comment in particular stating, "Juice World was getting extorted," even though some people like to deny it. Another user would respond shortly after saying, "Thank you." Why would Juice World be traveling on a jet with so much weed? No Limit was using him as a crash dummy. He just so happened to be a superstar. We will likely never know why and how the situation came to be. But at the end of the day, 70 pounds of narcotics were found in the luggage on board the private jet, with the Gang Investigation Federal Task Force in particular waiting for Juice World and No Limit to land. Who was that? That's me. Oh. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to bro, RP the Juice World. I did not know half of that shit. Bro, what about y'all? Yeah, that video that was fucking right crazy. I ain't even gonna lie. That was wow. Deep. That was deep. That was fucking deep. But in honor of Juice World, be, be, uh oh, hold up, Big Ski gonna freestyle. Shout out to DJ Antlo for oh. subbing. Thank you so much, subbing with Prime. My God, Reddit knows that is crazy. I did not know any of that, but I do know one thing about Juice World. One of the best freestylers that the rap game has ever seen. That nigga was elite when it comes down to that. Let's see this. And, and we gonna go next. Object Freestyle, Juice World. Oh yeah, this is the one, the Tim Westwood one. This one was- YouTube.com slash Tim Westwood TV. Yo, it's Tim Westwood TV. Up in Capital X, we got my man Juice World in the building. It's time to shut Juice down the going city off. again. Last yeah, freestyle, yeah. epic. RP Juice World. His biggest freestyle of the year. I don't know what that video said. That nigga was so talented. This time, nothing but Eminem beats. Understand what's about to go down. You see this the next hour. You see this one? The world is yours. You see this MJ? Watch this nigga. Look. He was cold with it. You ready? Cool. Uh huh. Back of Westwood. Bitch. Huh. Freestyle king, I'ma do my thing Married to the game, I'ma need a ring Run up on me, that chopper sing Brand new bitch, this a brand new thing Broke up with my bitch, now she my side bitch Text me on my sidekick, uh, yeah She don't keep the strap in the purse like a die bitch Run up, she fight shit, uh, yeah Nigga just lose it, Woo! be faking the optical illusions Run up on me, that chopper skip the conclusions I don't give a fuck with your bitch, I'ma do a Paw wall with her, I'ma chop her and screw her, uh Woo! Brand new money, run up on me Chopper hopping like a bunny, I don't want it, I don't want it Keep it 100, headshot, head Shot drop by and I hum a goddamn just lose it. Uh, make love, then make music. Uh, run up, chat. W's in the chat. RP Juice Will. Let do it. Uh, off of the top, I be kicking it. Hop on my dick like a frog, you be ripping it. Uh, look at the way I be ripping it. Drilling them like I be full of adrenaline. Uh, sick of the perks, I'ma put them down. This nigga was too cold. Uh, me that he was too me. cold. Your ass like you got a gown on. Guess you a pussy now, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess you a pussy <laughs> now, uh. Keep this be going. That nigga was too nice. I'm gonna pass for a second. I'm gonna get up on the ass for a second. Chop on me, it's gonna blast for a second. I'm gonna shoot him in his ass, I'm reckless. Do it big like football, Texas. I'm gonna ball out like the Texans. Bitches pay me like taxes. On the mattress, hit him back. Ride me carpet Aladdin At a space bowling on Saturn Give a fuck what you say I don't really care about nothing But the money I manage Hoes on me, they wanna fuck too That nigga was a dope Out of space, I've been pulling on Pluto Bad bitch <laughs> Hot like a motherfucker Hit the bitch up in June Whoa, hey, hey Summertime sadness Of the Zan trying to figure out what's up though W's in the chat Trying to fuck though W's in the yeah, chat R.I.P. the Juice World VVS on my wrist, no snow globe Incredible, swimming like Frozone I'ma probably put dick in your whole dome Uh-huh, uh-huh and your hoes on, uh huh, uh huh. I've been rapping all day, that's normal though. I'm an alien, goddamn it, that normal hoe. Pull up on the chopper, make it rain, storm it, hoe. Hot like a motherfucking global warming hoe. Then again, I'm colder than a freezer. Fuck you, bitch, I leave a dragon ball freezer. Pull up on the scene, my chopper got a fever. Hand on my heater, kick. 
yeah. Pop like a cheetah, fast like a cheetah, run up, I get him, uh, yeah. Chopper like Jesse White, the way I up the bitch and it flip him, uh, yeah. Spaz on their ass all day, though. I was in the cut, killing people like Tato. World in my hands, I'ma treat it like Play Doh. I'm full of shit, I'm a rich ass a ho, uh, yeah. Just lose it, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, just lose it. Bad bitch, look the fuck are you doing? You ain't getting naked, then I'm not gonna screw it, uh huh, uh. Just lose it. Don't make love, make music. Man, that nigga was so cold.